When I was 20 years old, I was just starting out as a musician, and I was in the time of my life when everything was kind of make it or break it. Um, and one night, I was in Chicago. I was playing the Vic Theater, because that night in Chicago, I, um, I had a miscarriage. I was 20 years old. I didn't even know I was pregnant. <laughs> and staring at my very young, very scared, very male managers <laughs> who had no idea what was going on, and I remember them looking at me and saying, I mean, it's 33 million impressions. This concert's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I had a choice to make in that moment, which was whether I was going to let this experience play out the way that it was probably supposed to, um, or if I was going to get out there and I was going to go on that stage. So I took a Percocet and I put on an adult incontinence diaper and uh, I wore a long t-shirt that would cover it and I got on stage and I performed in front of about 1,200 screaming teenage girls. It was in that moment that I realized that part of being a woman and dealing with reproductive health was being treated like you're not a human. It was being treated like you're a robot. Um, and you're supposed to wake up every day and, and get over it. But it was also in that moment that I realized that I could overcome anything. And that if I wanted to pursue this career and I wanted to pursue this path, there was absolutely nothing that was going to get in my way, excuse my language. And the biggest question was why me at 20 years old, perfectly healthy, able-bodied, why would I have a miscarriage? Um, and it was in that process that I found out that I had endometriosis. I'm really lucky. I get on stage every night in a little white costume, mind you. <laughs> and, um, and I work my ass off. And to any of my fans and friends and people listening to me who may not know anything about me or have ever heard a song, if you are struggling with endometriosis or any chronic illness for that matter, um, you need to know that it's not something that makes you weak. Um, it's a battle that you've overcome, and every battle that you win helps you win the war at the end of the day. Um, keep talking to your friends. Keep supporting your loved ones to the women in your life. Make sure that they don't feel ashamed to talk about their reproductive rights, to talk about their reproductive experiences, um, because the only way for, this, for us to gain control of this is to speak about it. This is a Silk exclusive. Welcome to another episode of Words Music Dance. I'm your host as always, Paul the Bull, no relation to Gravano. Uh, got a special episode here today, but once again, I'm joined by the homie Jared. What's good? And then we got a first time guest to the show, homie, long time friend. Yes. Karina. Yes. Yeah. You know, clap, clap that shit up. Clap that shit up. up. That shit you know. up. Uh, shout out to everybody listening on all the podcast apps and a couple new, new uh, subscribers and stuff there. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to everybody watching on YouTube, whether you're watching on your phone or on your big screen, you are appreciated. Love you. Keep up the support. Make, remember to like, comment, subscribe, comment. Let me know you're here. People have been texting me. Share. Hit me up. Let me know you're here if you're watching it. Share the link. Let everybody know what's going on because you're enjoying it. Make sure they get to enjoy it too. All right? Um, but before we move, you know, move on, I wanted to recap first. Uh, last week, mm -hmm. um, we had, uh, had a conversation with Priscilla and Michelle. Salute to y'all. And we were talking about the Super Bowl performance, J Lo Shakira. Yep. Jared, you commented. I have on on the post. Um, I love the concert to continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job on that. Um, you 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 spoke about the dude and his uh, his rant on uh, you know the crotch <laughs> shots and things like that. I was, that was a funny ass term. I, mean, yeah. I know that. I said all the time, but it's yeah, funny yeah. Thing. Karina, what were your thoughts on the crotch shots? <laughs> well, the crotch shots were one, and and the performance, or you know. I thought it was ridiculous. Like the whole, not not the performance. Okay, I okay. thought the whole like commentary behind it, and yeah. like the, the feedback, and like the complaints that are being filed now. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the girls brought up valid points mm -hmm. when they were talking. Like we see these cheerleaders half ass naked mm -hmm. almost every week, mm -hmm. and there's no complaints about that. That's normalized. That's mm -hmm. 
totally fine. But then you see two Latinas who actually have curves, who actually have they body. Do. They do. <laughs> um, then it's like a big deal mm -hmm. and now it's just like this is porn this is soft porn and then the one thing that stood out to me that I think I, I texted you about or like mm -hmm. I messaged you about was like the guy was really sitting here talking about my pre my <laughs> 12, adolescent 12 year, 12 year old son who's yeah. horny like what does that have to do with two Latin women performing are they supposed to know that like right. are they supposed to gauge a performance based off horny little boy they were like we're gonna perform now little Billy go to bed <laughs> All right, now so like <laughs> 20 minutes, right? <laughs> and then come back. Yeah. I thought they did an amazing job. If mm -hmm. anything, I wish Shakira would have performed uh, a little bit more to her Colombian and Lebanese roots. Mm -hmm. I've been following Shakira since early 90s. I grew up with her, and mm -hmm. she has done a lot more than what she did for that performance. Yeah. But I mean, I, I guess time wise, right? Of course. Yeah. But I was super proud to see two Latin women, mm -hmm. such as Shakira and J Lo, mm -hmm. who you know is Puerto Rican, and I'm Puerto Rican somewhere. And so, okay. like that Sounds was. Out of line. <laughs> it falls, Sounds out of line. My mom's Puerto Rican. It happens. Exactly, exactly. Um, but I was proud to see that, and mm -hmm. it just—I think it's so disturbing. That's the word. Like disturbing to see now, like what's happening now yeah. that we it, we finally have someone, two people representing us, mm -hmm. and now it's just like this big show. Thirteen hundred FCC complaints and counting. And, and counting. <laughs> uh, it, 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 Still it's, not amassed. Fuck it, five thousand people who even care. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. It's it's it was just funny reading that, but you know, yeah, uh, it was just it was just a very interesting uh, thing. But definitely kicked up the month with that conversation. Uh, this is uh, uh, national. Women's... Before you go into that, okay, America mm -hmm. and other countries who are watching this. Okay, shout out to y'all. If you have, yeah. all the parents in the world, mm -hmm. shout out to y'all, and those who are adopting whatever. Mm -hmm. When kids. Boys in general mm -hmm. or 12, <laughs> we're starting to find ourselves. <laughs> Maybe even so, younger. <laughs> even, and now they, even, and now they're even younger. younger. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're 12, 11, 10, you gotta start watching things. Yeah. It could be the baddest chick dressed up in a tight ass dress. Mm -hmm. Still gonna think about. Doing some things that he had no idea about doing. Yeah. So it doesn't matter about them being half naked or fully clothed. If they hot, they hot. I mean, yeah. I mean, he he watching cartoons, anime. Anime's pretty movies. graphic. Some of it. Especially anime. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. Anime's yeah. Are super graphic. Yeah. Well, so hentai. Is, I mean, hentai is, is cartoon porn, but <laughs> but it's porn though, right. nonetheless. Like it's, it's graphic. Porn. It's porn. It's the internet, man. The internet. I'm pretty sure your damn son. I'm pretty sure your son was a heathen before you even knew. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. I don't know the guy. Uh, nah, fuck him. The views and opinions. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> my opinion. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as I was saying, uh, this is uh, you know uh, Women's Women's History Month. Um, it's also I just found out um, endometrios in, in, endometriosis. Endometriosis. Awareness Month. You had to get a second time. I mean, yeah, I, you know, yeah. we're working on that. Working on that, and I learned about endometriosis from Karina. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely want to get Karina on here to explain it to everyone else that my viewers, watchers, listeners, um, because it's it's you know something that I'm starting to see a little traction. A lot, people, a lot more people are talking about it now. Uh, some people are unaware of some things about it. Um, Karina is. I, I definitely wanted to give Karina her flowers for you know being an advocate for it, um, speaking out about it, teaching people about it, you know, informing you know, like I said, myself and others. Um, and Karina is also. Someone that deals with it, uh, you know. Not putting the business out there. She, she said I can say that. No. Nope. Um, but we're gonna have that conversation as well. Um, so once again, Karina, thank you for you know thank being here. Thank you for having me. You asked me a couple oh. of months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for allowing us. Yes, to, to yes, 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 yes. It's not something that people you know might want to always talk about. But like I said, you no, are someone that's right. and, uh, you know advocating it and and teaching the awareness and stuff about it. Mm -hmm. So you know, praise you on that. Um, number one question, like top of my head. What is endometriosis? So I'm not a doctor, but, but you um, play one on TV. I I just want to say that <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, but endometriosis is basically tissue like, similar or like, uh, the uterine lining of a woman's uterus. Mm -hmm. Um, and it grows outside of the uterus. So twelve year old boys, stop laughing <laughs> and stop thinking about the uterus. Stop thinking like. about the uterus. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so what happens is this tissue grows outside of the women's uterus. Um, it can grow anywhere. I've heard of stories of 
it growing on the bowel, bladder, mm. heart, lungs, mm -hmm. spine. Mm -hmm. It grows anywhere. It really does not discriminate where it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Not just the uterus as people seem to think. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is... Because it's close, so it's just... Right, so people assume because it's a, kind of a, a period-related diagnosis right. or illness, then mm -hmm. it just automatically means, oh, it's the uterus. Mm -hmm. It's uterus-related. Um, and so what happens is during the time that we bleed every month with our menstrual cycle, these tissues start bleeding as well. Mm -hmm. And so scar tissues start forming and over time it can start, you know, just, it's a lot of pain to deal mm -hmm. with in general because you're obviously bleeding from places you shouldn't be bleeding mm -hmm. and you have scar tissue where you shouldn't have scar tissue. Um, and sometimes it even kind of like meshes like body, like organs together. So I've heard stories of women's, you know, bladder and rectum fused together internally and it's just very painful and it just causes all these uncomfortable and just indescribable painful symptoms whether it's every month when mm -hmm. we have our menstrual cycle or just in general every day mm -hmm. when how old were you when you first were diagnosed with endometriosis so i was officially diagnosed when i was 26. okay i'm 28 now so it's been two years okay. um about to be three mm -hmm. there is no way to diagnose it without a surgery so i had to go under surgery mm -hmm. um uh, lap laparoscopic surgery okay. and so that was the way I was had a, like a, a fully confirmed diagnosis mm -hmm. but I've been dealing with pain since I was probably as young as 23 and just unaware of what the pain was correct correct got it got it what 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 how did you like what made you have the surgery or what did when did you know that that was what it was that you needed to have the surgery or whatever? So what happened was when I was 23, I ended up in the ER. My first ER visit was for an ovarian cyst that ruptured. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I ended up a couple of times after that where you ended up taking me once mm -hmm. to the ER as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a lot of pain and like no one knew what to do. And they were just telling me to follow up with an OBGYN and get on some birth control and whatever, kind of like start treatment for that. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I went to an OBGYN. I went on birth control. It seemed to like subs it subsided a bit the pain, mm -hmm. but then I want to say about 24, 25, mm -hmm. it started getting worse again. So the pain, instead of being every month, this was every day. Mm. And it was just like this extreme un like pain in my pelvis. Like I couldn't describe. It would take over my hips. Like it just was something like I've never ever felt in my life before. Mm -hmm. And so I actually got a referral from my OBGYN to see a specialist for mm -hmm. it when I was maybe 24 mm -hmm. I put it off for a year I was in big denial mm -hmm. I kind of had an idea this is what I had but I didn't want to confirm mm -hmm. it so I put it off but then as the pain kept progressing I eventually decided to go forward so two days after my 26th birthday I had my surgery Happy birthday. Uh, thanks. <laughs> and then yeah they confirmed it that mm -hmm. I was stage two endometriosis you said you had an idea did you do research on it already did you, I did. Were you already aware of it yes okay. so I heard of it I didn't really know what it was mm -hmm. um when I had discussions with my OBGYN and my mom we kind of had like suspicions that this is what it sounded like symptoms were like really similar mm -hmm. um but like I said there's no way to confirm it until you have the surgery because they have to see what's going on internally Got it. um and then but yes I had an idea that this is what it was but I was just terrified to get that confirmed mm -hmm. when, when did you first like start researching endometriosis I started researching I believe a year before I went into when I finally decided to go see the specialist what made you look it up um because my OBG had mentioned it mm -hmm. um and I didn't know what it was and okay. so I wanted to be kind of aware of what this could be or what this meant for me as a woman or mm -hmm. what this looked like for my future mm -hmm. um and then I started doing my research would you recommend like more women to look into absolutely hands mm -hmm. down um I think one of the biggest things which is why I advocate so much now um, so, you know, one of the biggest issues that we have with this disease, it's not talked about because it has to do with the women's menstrual mm -hmm. and ill. Oh my God, <laughs> nobody wants to talk about it, but guess what? We're women. Mm -hmm. It's, it's part of life. Mm -hmm. It's part of life. It's human nature. It's what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing is when I first got my period at 10 years old, I was in excruciating pain all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm from Dominican, Puerto Rican, and Ecuadorian culture, and they're very, you know, women should be strong, this is what you're made for, if you can't do this, then you can't handle childbirth. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of conditioned to think, like, this is this is normal, this is what I'm supposed to believe. Mm -hmm. And so, it's not. Right. Period pain, period cramps are supposed to make you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but they're not supposed to be painful, pain, right, right. where they just kind of uh, hinder you from going through your daily life. 
Mm. And so that was the issue with me. And so I kept thinking every time, like, oh, this is normal. I'm okay. This mm -hmm. is what I'm supposed to go through. But then it became where, like, this is not normal because I'm feeling this every day and this should not be. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I advocate for women to be on top of it. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling, listen to your body. If you're feeling something that you think is not normal, get a check. It doesn't right. hurt. Right. What are, what are like, uh, symptoms or any type of uh, occurrences or things that could be something that could maybe hit towards having it or what, 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 what could one look for? So one of the most common I release symptoms is pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. We will definitely feel pelvic pain whether you're on your period, mm -hmm. whether it's ovulation time, you'll feel a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the second indicators for me at least it was where it was pain where I had to like literally crotch in the fetal position mm. where I couldn't get up where I couldn't do anything mm. heavy bleeding is definitely one of them so if you're like soaking through pads on like hours mm -hmm. every hour you're switching out that's something mm -hmm. um but definitely I think that the main even like I said even if it's not endometriosis one of the main symptoms though that you should be kind of concerned is if that's that pain where you can't not even ibuprofen or Advil mm -hmm. kind of helps mm -hmm. What through your research, what what like stood out to you, or what like was like shocking to you? Like, were you aware of something like this, or like what stood out to you when you were researching and looking it up? I think what really stood out to me was how how common it is. Mm -hmm. One in ten women have this disease. Mm -hmm. So if you know ten women, chances are one of them has them. Mm -hmm. Like you know me, here mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. um, over two hundred thousand women have this disease. Mm -hmm. And it goes undiagnosed. And that's worldwide? Worldwide. Okay. okay. Um, it goes undiagnosed mm -hmm. and goes undetected. Mm -hmm. um, women go years without getting any type of diagnosis. The worst part of this disease is that it takes about literally, not literally, but I want to say approximately 7 to 10 years to get a diagnosis. Mm. So we go through years and years of pain and we, one of the funny things, not funny, but one of the things I look back at now when I was, before I got diagnosed, my OBGYN thought I was depressed or like psychotic and that mm. I needed to get a therapist because maybe this was just me uh, presenting like somatic symptoms for something else. Mm. So they just, they just thought you were overreacting to the pain. Correct. It's, it's they, not that painful. You it's just, not that painful. You're mm. overreacting. There's something else going on at home. Mm. And I remember those uncomfortable questions. And I remember I even not, I've never been one to be disrespectful to anybody, but mm. even I came out of my face in a way and I was just like, um, I'm studying to be a mental health counselor. I know mm -hmm. these diagnoses. Like I know, I think I would know what mm -hmm. I have, or mm -hmm. at least do be uh, do my due diligence to get help if I thought I had any type of depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I know what I'm feeling, mm -hmm. and so he wanted to refer me to a therapist, and I said no. I was adamant that I wasn't going to go to one. Mm -hmm. And it, it's one of those things where it's like women are looked at like you're being a wuss. Like mm -hmm. grow up. This is nothing. Was that a woman that said that? It was a man. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's no longer my OBGYN. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not a good... <laughs> For many reasons more than that, though. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to that. Uh, <laughs> you should. Uh, 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 no, uh, that was another episode. <laughs> is, this, is this a go-tell-me-too episode? Yeah, that'd be a whole other episode. No, no, no. Okay. No, okay. Me too. no, me too. Okay, all right. Make sure. No, no, no. Yeah, you'd be like, all right, my favorite pa patient is here. No. <laughs> Gary, you got any questions you want yeah, to ask? Was, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to you speak. Um, mm -hmm. So you say you're stage two. How many different stages are there? Of this? Right now, currently, there's four stages. Okay, so it's almost like, so it's kind of like the, the, the trend of cancer and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah. is, is, is it a form of cancer? It's not a form of cancer, um, but it should be treated mm -hmm. like cancer in a way that... Um, it definitely takes a toll. Mm -hmm. It definitely takes a toll on you mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, I think because there's also no treatment for it, mm -hmm. you can look at it as cancer. There's no cause. Nobody knows the cause for it. Um, That's what I was, was going to ask that. Too. Yeah, there's no cause for it. They don't know what it is. There's a lot of theories. There was one theory, I believe the Samson theory. I'm not too sure if that was it. I think that is uh, where they say that when a woman gets her period, when a young girl gets her period, um, if, if they're younger, like a young, if it's, I guess the younger age, mm -hmm. some of the period kind of backflows, and that's what causes like the scar tissue to build up, mm -hmm. which has been proven incorrect. Okay. Um, then they also say genetics. It could be genetics, but in some cases, in a lot of cases, actually, the people that I know, mm -hmm. they don't have it. So mm -hmm. I know nobody in my family has it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know about my dad's side, but I know from my mother's side at least we don't have it. Well, I was going to say, I mean, based on certain people's cultures, you know, and stuff, like some people will like to think, oh, that doesn't happen here. Or For sure. Whatever. So there's probably a lot of people who are go do, who do go undiagnosed. And not to say, I mean, I mean there could be somebody in who may have had it. And never want to check and see if they just thought, sure. they just thought it was something else. Too. For sure, no, absolutely. I don't, I don't. Um, I believe that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but like at least to the women that I've spoken to in my family, they say no. But again, it definitely goes back to culture. Like, did you think this was something? Were you conditioned the same way that I was to mm -hmm. believe that this is normal, and so you mm -hmm. kind of like went around your business as nothing? You just, like basically, you said it's just like oh, it's your period, but you just have a different flow than others, or you Correct. get cramps more than like some stuff. women yeah. get it worse than others, right. and so I don't know. I mean, I, truly, I'll never really know. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. There's a lot of theories going around that it is genetics. There's a lot of theories going around. I actually read something recently that it, it's you can detect it as early as in a fetus. Mm. So I think mm -hmm. they found in certain, um, it was like, I believe nine certain, I don't remember the statistics, 9%. Mm -hmm. They found 9% of female fetuses to have it already. Mm. So we don't know now if you're born with it, right. and it kind of maybe activates later on as mm -hmm. you hit puberty. Right, when you start mm -hmm. your first period. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know. Well, and so that, I think, is the most frustrating part. When you, you said, when you said you're, um, your OBGYN said at 24 to get checked for it, and you didn't do anything about it until 26, because uh, you were in that stage of denial. Do you think anything could have been done differently if you did it at 24? No. No. I don't. I don't believe so. I think, I mean, the reason why I say no is because there's still no treatment for it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still on the same course that I would have been at two years before. Right. I, think, uh, I think I should have done it a lot sooner, for sure. Maybe they could have caught... Um, it sooner maybe mm -hmm. the pain wouldn't have been as intense now maybe things could have been different absolutely right. but I still believe the course of treatment would be the same um, for um, endometriosis um, does it affect because I know if it affects menstrual cycle so does it affect pregnancy also yes so it can um, which was one of the reasons why I was in denial at first because the first thing when people think of endometriosis if you read about it is it can affect your fertility for sure um, not necessarily doesn't mean you'll be infertile not necessarily doesn't mean that you won't have children but it, you can struggle with it and there's uh, many other diseases as well or illnesses that can affect that and so that was one of the things I was scared of because I was still stuck in a moment where as a woman I failed like my body has failed me as a woman mm -hmm. where I can't do what I was meant to do and yeah, that's a tough thought to, yeah. to to deal with right um going back to something that Jared asked and well, he, you mentioned that you're stage two mm -hmm. what are the state like what classifies the stages so um, what classifies the stages is when they go and they do surgery mm -hmm. um, I believe it's a point system they use mm -hmm. um, the surgeons when I say they or the doctors they mm -hmm. use a point system and they, I, they. <laughs> and um, as many points I guess or how as many lesions that they can find okay. they'll start kind of putting you in the stages so I was a stage two, but mm -hmm. I just want to clarify, just because you're like in stage one, stage two, doesn't mean that you have less pain than what a stage four patient would look mm -hmm. like. Because it just depends on where and... Correct. Yeah. It depends what it, where it is, mm -hmm. what's affecting it. Um, and so sometimes people think, well, stage four has it so much worse and oh my God, their pain must be so intense. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's no, stage two actually, mm -hmm. which is what my surgeon told me. She said, you're a stage two, but just because you're a stage two doesn't mean that your pain it may be more severe than a stage four. Got it. Got it. Can it worsen? Can you upgrade to three? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Can, okay. The lesions keep growing. Gotcha. Unless you're under a course of treatment, the lesions keep growing. Are you under a treatment? No. Okay. I'm not. Do you, don't, you don't need it? You don't... You... I've been kind of uh, torn about it. Okay. Um, I do need it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the reason why I didn't do what they were asking me to do is because the course of treatments that they have are not necessary. And I'm not saying this that it doesn't work for some. I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. But when I did my research, I didn't want to do what they wanted me to do because it required putting a lot of uh, harmful chemicals into my body. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. And what that is kind of just like give you guys like a rundown of it. Like one of the course of treatments they wanted me on was Lupron. And so Lupron is an injection. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a form of chemo. Mm -hmm. um, and what mm -hmm. it does, it kind of puts you into a chemical um, induced menopause. 
Mm. And so I would have put my body into menopause at 26. Mm -hmm. um, but super early. Yeah, super early, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what happens then is, yes, it could have stopped the lesions from growing for sure, and I wouldn't have a period. Mm -hmm. But what happens in that case, I have all the symptoms and side effects of a person with menopause. Mm -hmm. And there's just many other risks, like osteoporosis. Uh, you would have to do a, de a bone density check every three months to make sure that the Lupron is not affecting your bones. Mm -hmm. And so there was just more risk than benefits okay. for me. Yeah, that's a lot to, to do with it at such an early age. Right. You know? and, and it's also, you know... Menopause is a is a is a a body shifting phase for women. You know, I'm yeah. a man. I'm not speaking as I know. I'm just saying from from what I heard uh, that you know a lot of women go through a change. You know, the hot flashes, the cold flashes, or the, you know your body. But that's you something to football? you. Tra huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not, and I have nothing against those that are. Do you speak from personal experience? No, I'm speaking from uh, talking to people. Okay. I've heard, and and you know, but but you know that's something that's. Something like you said, at an early age, and you know, and for, for a, long, a period of time to deal with, and it's, it's changing your body. Yeah. Like a chemical that's changing your body is 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 a, is a big adjustment in itself, and that too could cause some mental, you know, Absolutely. depression and and thoughts. Absolutely. And that that that's a that's a big thing to think about as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I battled years before that. I battled years with birth control, and birth control completely transformed my body. Right into something that I was not proud of. Mm -hmm. And so I already had that kind of in my head and I was just like, no, I'm gonna do more research on what I can do mm -hmm. uh, to help myself without having to resort to these mm -hmm. chemicals. And I, I advise everyone that is watching and listening uh, to do research as well. Like, like Karina said, she is not a doctor. Um, we given she's given the facts that she can as much as she can right now. Um, there's way more to it, bodies are different. Um, not everyone's the same. Other experiences may vary. Conditions so, are different. Conditions, conditions are different. So please don't just take her word for it. This is right. we're starting the conversation. The conversation continues. Um, anyone who can relate to even minute any 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 small fact of what she's saying, check. Make sure you know, and, and, and do your own research. Look up stuff. Um, check up on your strong check up on, Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And, and <laughs> just make sure you know, uh, health is wealth. Um, you know. Like you said, one in ten. One in ten. That, that that's you know, that's a lot. You that know, is. and it's, this is something that had like I said, I've just been made aware of this maybe three, four years ago. Yeah. Something like that. That I, I've never heard of it until you mentioned it, and I was like, what is that? Like you know, and it's something that's really. I mean, right now we're all talking about the coronavirus. Um, the flu's been here for years, and people that have been dying from the flu, but the coronavirus is the new, the hotness. It's the new new. Everybody talking about it, but endometriosis exists there's a lot of things that exist people you know just don't just get caught up in hypes you know yeah there, there's a just know yourself find out about yourself and honestly the coronavirus has been around for years too Absolutely. yeah it, it has like i said it, it's, it's just it's just the hot it's the trend now you know it's yeah. the trend now it's the new sars <laughs> right yeah, whatever, yeah. ebola the sars swine, 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 swine. oh my god that was fine yeah time. there's always there's always something you oh, know right? we had chicken pox and chicken pox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what i mean <laughs> So we are not, you know, I we just saying, you know, it's real out here. You know, you just don't know what you have. And like you said, people, there could be women who may have that or other things and just shrug it off as just, you know, oh, the, my flow is heavy or this yeah. is the pains is the cramps and you know, you just don't know what it, that, what it could be. It could be women who, you know, um, you know, as you said, could just be in denial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, For but sure. like, you know, because they don't want. It's because I, I know people who, who thought they've had cancer or um, something else and they like, I don't want to check because I don't want to know. Right, I just yeah. don't want to know. know. You're scared to know the truth, but sometimes knowing the truth early can kind of temper certain things from happening later on. I mm -hmm. think so. it's the unknown that's scary. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for me, that's what it was. Just the unknown and possibilities of what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. um, but now I know. And so. And you advocate on your social media. Yes. Yeah. Um, you also do like trainings and classes to kind of teach on it, kind of? Um, I don't do trainings or okay. classes. I have Well, not training. I don't want to say training. You're not training. Hey, this is how you deal with it. No. But, no. <laughs> but absolutely for not. $500, <laughs> no. you no. too could be a survivor. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah. I definitely make it my business to educate myself educate as you. much yeah. and kind yeah. of spread the word where I can. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And, that, and that's a big thing. You, you have a shirt on. Yes, I do. One in ten mm -hmm. from the Endo Coalition. So all twelve-year-old boys, stop looking at <laughs> stop looking at the boobies. Yes, 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 yes. And 
on, on your social media, uh, you, you have your friends hold up the sign, 1 in 10. I do. So, um, actually, the Endo Coalition, which I got the shirt from, mm -hmm. they had a challenge two years ago. So, I found out two years ago I had it. And mm -hmm. so, they had a challenge, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. um, and they make, you know, loved ones and family members and whoever mm -hmm. make for, uh, signs, you know, my blank is 1 in 10. Mm -hmm. And hashtags, all the hashtags that are down there. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a way to bring awareness. So, mm -hmm. March is endometriosis. Uh, endometriosis awareness month. And so you I, said it wrong too, see? I did. It took me a while. <laughs> the first year, I was just like, well, how do I say this? Yeah. Um, but but um, yeah, I do want to bring awareness to it. I mean, like uh, endo weed. Right, yeah, endo. It a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded out like it was syllables, and it clap it out. Yeah, endometriosis. Endo Everybody try it at home. Endometriosis. Yes, um, but yeah, and I just I want to bring that awareness portion to it. I mm -hmm. think it's important. Um, exactly. So I'm doing the challenge again now um, because I'm in a very different space than what I was two years ago when mm -hmm. I found out. And I think now I actually have like the genuine support. Mm -hmm. um, I have great support systems and people who actually want to learn and mm -hmm. educate themselves mm -hmm. on it, like you guys and like many other people. And so yeah, I have it on my social media. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I'm private on Instagram, but for this month I'm public. I am publishing every day mm -hmm. one of those pictures, mm -hmm. um, either with so a fact or with a quote or something. Mm -hmm. um, just to bring that awareness because I think it's really important to have that. So for the next 25 days. <laughs> oh, hold on, let's see, come on, what's that? Do your math right Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll come back to him, give you a calculator. Jared has his sign already, I got, I got mine, I gotta, where's it, I gotta, I gotta fill mine out, um, but you said you wanna do one, you wanna have one person for every day? Yes, yeah. Um, li viewers, listeners as well, yep. if you wanna create the sign, um, Jared hold yours up real quick again. The hashtag. What are the hashtags that we have on here? So the hashtags is one in ten. Mm -hmm. Endo warriors. So that's one of the things. Um, endometriosis patients, or uh, I don't want to say patients, but yes, patients. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. known as warriors because it is an intense disease that we're battling, and we are warriors. And I actually had that tattooed two months after I had my surgery. One month after I had my surgery, I tattooed that on my ankle mm -hmm. as a daily reminder. We have hashtag endometriosis, um, awareness month, and endo community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please make your signs. I actually want to see them. Mm -hmm. Send them to me, mm -hmm. um, or you can send them to Paul. Yes. So, uh, you know, you can you can send them to a twenty twenty one vision. You can DM DM me uh, DM them to sign to me. You don't mind. If I don't mind. To you, so give your social media. So my social media tag is for Instagram K A R I N A A. E dot underscore. That's not the type. It is. So if Sorry. you get that at Twenty Twenty One Vision on Instagram, send it to me. Um, support support the movement. Support the warriors. Um, I, like I said, I'm gonna do it. Jared's already got one. In the next twenty days, I, I oh, here we go. Here we go. Calculated. Calculated. Here we so go. So for the next twenty days, you mm -hmm. got a free preview mm -hmm. of her of her things. Wait, wait, what are you saying? That's not what we're advertising. Yeah. Wait. Whoa. 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 <laughs> no. no we have to <laughs> Oh, that's leader. Oh, that's my leader. Yeah, oh, my bad. Yeah. But for the next 20 days, you can support her yeah, you know, there publicly. We go. There we go. You know, she can see your stuff. There we go. Um, yes, yes, yes. By your, I mean, your stuff. I mean, the signs. The signs. Um, signs. Yes. No DMs support. of any other kind. No, we ain't no, doing that. No. Or you catch your hands. Right, exactly. Um, exactly. But, um, and there was something I do want to say. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this is also the kind of challenge you want to do. Yes. Not that stupid fucking yeah, holding up brooms and um skull breaking challenge. <laughs> yeah. Oh my or, god, yeah. yeah. Or or even I mean look, even the ice bucket was kinda like wow. But like not, none of none of these fucking little shit where they set you on fire or mm -hmm. or the or the, the shit on TikTok, top whatever yeah. when they the the the, 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 the switch the, yeah, the switch. Yeah. None of that bullshit. Like mm -hmm. this is this is real shit that affects life, you know? Mm -hmm. Like this is this kind of stuff you want to support, you know, and it doesn't cost you your life. Right. <laughs> and guys, ask questions. One of the biggest things that I had a pet peeve with and I still do is the ignorance behind it. Ask questions. You don't know something, ask. Many times Paul has asked me, Jared asked me today, I have many friends who are males asking me questions. I know it's like taboo, periods, whatever. Ask questions, it's important. Don't come in with some ignorant shit. Like, I had somebody tell me, oh, well, you can't get pregnant now, so you're useless. Like, what? Wow. How does... Ask questions. Yeah, she said that to me earlier, and mm -hmm. I hope you are watching this episode. Zoom this shit on to me right now. Okay, gotcha. Um, <laughs> whoever you are, and I know who you are, Hope you're watching this shit. Cause you catch your hands, fam. Mm. Did you ever say some wild shit like that on any day? Whoever you are, if you're a real man, you never say some wild shit like that to a woman. Ever. Respect them. 
Respect yours. Or I come to your mom's house, nigga. Big <laughs> brother. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> and I'll be, I'll be right behind him like, yeah. <laughs> what he said. Fam. That's, that's wild, man. You know, that's, that's some wild shit. I would have thought someone ignorant and be like, oh, word, you can't get pregnant, so I get to shoot the club up. Like, you know, <laughs> not that, like, you're useless. Right, like, that sounds better. <laughs> like, oh, word? As fucked up as it is, it sounds better yeah. I mean, than okay, saying so you're the, useless. Just to clarify, the comment mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily that, but wait, it mm -hmm. was worse than that, actually. Oh, okay. I'm just, I was trying to, like, Make it a little less severe than what it was. No, nah, it was that bad. It was, a mean, sto it was like there's a whole nah, story slow. behind it, but the okay. comment basically was, and I'm just going to give the comment verbatim without mm -hmm. the context behind it. Okay. It was like, if you can't have a kid in the future with me, mm -hmm. I'm going to resent you for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's yeah. That was it. And so that was really hurtful at the time. Obviously. Now you kind of wipe that off and you kind of... Way better ways of saying shit like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, also there's just like conversations. Like, you don't know that. We don't know. I don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not actively having a kid. I don't know mm -hmm. what, I can, what I can or can I not do. Right. Um, but I think definitely ask questions. It's important. Don't come out with some ignorant shit. Like, mm -hmm. Question. Um, so, I remember, uh, I know you said that you're... It sent it to a specialist. So mm -hmm. is this person um, just focusing just on endometriosis, or does it, or the person specialize in other things? So that's yes. So they have they have endometriosis specialists. The thing is with that, there's not many specialists right now. Um, reason why is because there's not many education behind it. They're not being educated on it um, in school, whether it's medical school, nursing school. There's not enough funding from the government either. Mm -hmm. They're cutting actually our funding down. Mm. Um, what that means now is for us that there won't be much research done. Um, there won't be that education portion for schools. So we do have very limited uh, specialists. My specialist or my surgeon, uh, she was a specialist. I have a pet peeve with her because she kind of ditched me after surgery. Uh, so that's what a lot of patients go through. It's about money, huh? Right. So we go through many. That's another thing. A lot of endometriosis patients, and I speak for many women I've spoken to, and actually I'm in a lot of forums that in groups that I, I talk to them. Mm -hmm. um, they've had multiple surgeries. Like, I'm talking about up to 10 surgeries in their lifetime. Mm. And because there's just not enough uh, knowledge behind it, there's not enough support either. Like, these specialists kind of just do the surgery and drop you off and call it a day. Mm. So I had my surgery almost three years ago, and I had yet to get followed up on. What the fuck? Mm, she seriously? never followed up on me. Wow. She gave me some bullshit go to physical therapy type of thing. And it's just like, ma'am, I'm still in pain. Like the surgery, even two years later, I'm still in pain. Right. Did nothing for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing I kind of want to provide or shed light on. There's two types of surgeries to have. And a lot of it, a lot of the, because it's not, we don't have a specialist that mm -hmm. do it. It's not funded. So the surgery that it is not the cure, but kind of helps or is the longest like treatment available is excision. So mm -hmm. that's when they actually get to the root of the endometriosis and kind of like chop it off mm -hmm. and then may or may not grow back for some time. Mm -hmm. Ablation is when they burn it off at the oh, top. I know about ablations. Mm -hmm. They burn it off at the top mm -hmm. and so it does grow potentially. So that's what I had and that's what many women have. The and so frequency or the um yeah, it does radio frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So they burn it off, and then guess what? It grows with time. It mm -hmm. obviously will grow back. They didn't get the root of it, and so we're kind of stuck. We're back to square one. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm at. So now I'm actually going to a new specialist uh, sometime soon, and I will be going back under surgery again. Mm -hmm. So this will be my second surgery in less than five years. Mm -hmm. We're going to follow up on with that. Um, we spoke about... Uh, you know, wanting people to do research and stuff. What are like some websites that, that people can check out to, to I, do research? Besides just Google. Right. Or, or WebMD. I do endofound.org. Um, that's the Endometriosis Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around for a number of years. I really don't want to give an exact year. Um, mm -hmm. They're the ones that kind of started the whole movement and okay. per se as like educating mm -hmm. there are they do uh the endo ball every year so that's where they bring a couple guests um mm -hmm. i know one of them was one of my favorite artists that she has endometriosis halsey mm -hmm. she spoke i think a couple years back um talking about her experience with it and they just you know they raise money for it it's all about raising money so we can do the research mm -hmm. needed to kind of figure out how to catch this or how to diagnose it without being so invasive mm -hmm. or how to help with the treatment like we have to start from somewhere. Right. And so that's one where I would definitely go. Facebook too. Like I'm in a lot of like Facebook uh, pages, group mm -hmm. pages. Mm -hmm. And you have to see the women that just kind of like spill their guts there. And it's just so, some of them is very 
uh, sad, but mm -hmm. it's also very uh, uplifting. Like the endo community is very welcoming, very warm. Mm -hmm. These women are all very just, they kind of like lift you up. Mm -hmm. like if you're having a bad day, they don't know you. But they will lift you up. That's one of the one of the good sides of social media being used for yes. you know you, you guys yes. have counsel and like a meeting yes. where you don't have to go to the actual meeting Correct. and you Correct. guys all over the world and anybody you know there's a, there's a lot of groups like that that that's you know one time when social media is used for for Absolutely. you know uses power for good so that, that's Absolutely. good to know. I mean I I'm a therapist myself but then that's my therapy right. like if I'm having a crappy day yeah, and even I have, the healer needs to be healed exactly yeah. and then yeah. when I and you know I'm, one of the things that we go through is flare ups we do have flare ups and mm -hmm. so there are days where I have really bad flare ups just randomly and I can't move or I can't function and mm -hmm. so what do I do I'll sit with one of these women and we'll talk and mm -hmm. we'll just kind of patch it out together and figure out that we're at least we're here we're mm -hmm. as a community together for one another good to know good to know jared you got any more questions um i did um uh, i'm trying to think right now uh, <laughs> is there anything it. anything that you want to share that we may have missed that that needs to be uh stated um, i mean you mentioned halsey is, is one of the uh yeah. celebrities that are there, are there any other celebrities that kind of came out about it um yeah i believe i think her name is lena dunham Okay. Lena Dunham has it. Mm -hmm. uh, she's spoken it out about it multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, Alexa Chung was one recently that came out uh, with it as well. Mm -hmm. She spoke on her experience. I'm trying to think of any other celebrities. There's a few though that have mm -hmm. it. I think uh, I saw Julian a commercial. I, saw, um, I think I saw a commercial by it and I immediately told you because yes. I was like, I know, I know what that is. You know, yes. it was one of those like I heard of that. I heard of that. Yes. And because I guess the awareness once celebrities start to speak that's when awareness becomes you know correct you know like i said i have this podcast um this is you know the awareness that i'm bringing to some of my viewers and, and, and listeners but you know celebrities have a bigger platform and once commercials start coming out and things like that that's when there's a greater chance of you know more being done and you know and and and, and like but i just like i said for people listening and watching they may not know or yeah. you know may not have heard of it fellas you may meet a girl who may say this, you know, this is what, what you can do. You don't need to say you're useless or no, anything silly no, like that. Like, no. you know, we're men, you know, this yeah. is, I, I'm a man. This is, this is my platform, but you know, I know women that are doing things or have points of view as well. Like not even just dealing with the situation, but have a point of view on something. This is, this is, this is what I wanted to do to, you know, with this platform and share it at the moment and, 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 you know, have that as little as it may be right now, but, Still, it, it matters. And it's not little. It matters. It matters a lot. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something. You have to start from somewhere. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thank you both, but I thank you for even inviting me for sure, for to sure. talk about it. I think it was wonderful that you asked me now for this month. And, and I didn't even know. Right, yeah, you did it. It was timely. And you found out, Trip and you were like, "Don't even ask me how." And you thought <laughs> this was a great idea, and I'm I didn't have a yellow shirt, but this is the most yellow I have. That's I fine. That yellow Yellows is the, are color. Yes, yellow is the, is the awareness color. Yes, it's our awareness color. Our ribbon is yellow. Yeah. Um, not sure why it's yellow, truthfully, but it's yellow. They came out with the pamphlets with yellow, and it kept going with yellow. Right. We stick with yellow. Now. Yeah, I didn't have any yellow. I was like, my minion shirt was in dirty clothes. I was like, but I was like, oh, Homer, yellow. So That's I have, have my have my little bit of yellow on because again I, I did a little bit of research. Um, I didn't you know one because like I said you brought it to my attention years ago. Um, two, the, the you know the, the, the numbers one in ten is 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 a lot. Like when you think about one in ten, like you said, if you know ten women, one of them you know. It, so I looked into some things. Like I said, seen commercials about it. it. It stuck out. I'm starting to see more. People talk about it now, yeah. so it's it's just something that you know, and that's why the yellow crossed my path, crossed my mind, and uh, I was like, you know, and then like I said, I found out this was the month for it. And I was just like, oh, oh, it's it's wonderful the amount of support I've gotten this particular year for it. Um, mm -hmm. I've had friends that send me yellow flowers. I've had just numerous people standing up and talking about it and kind of reposting whatever I post. Mm -hmm. um, had a lot of like new followers as far as like endometriosis women. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have that support. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's. It, some days are harder than others, um, so I think it's great to have that. Great to ask questions. I think it's great not to like gener you know, not to like um, put the spotlight on you guys, but I think it's great because you guys are men and you yeah. guys actually want to learn. Yeah. And I think the reasons why we're talking about it more now is because uh, women are no longer ashamed to talk about right. their period and menstrual cycle. And again, it's normal. So 
I think a lot of the reasons why it wasn't talked about was because of that. And this is an adult conversation. Right. Um, I might have to put a disclaimer in the beginning or whatever, but yes. no talking about periods, <laughs> talking about the menstrual cycle, yeah. and menopause, and yeah. this is a, this is an adult conversation, you know. I can admit, a couple years ago I probably would have been giggling during this conversation, you know what I'm saying, but it's it, it's easy for me to have this conversation now. <laughs> you, know, <right. laughs> you know what I mean, but it's easier for me to have this conversation now, I guess, the maturity, but it's serious, it's something that, you know, and it's it's, you know, some people may not... Like you said, some women may be afraid to even say it because someone they're talking to, you know, a man in their life may not be ready to have the conversation as well. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, it, yeah. I'm thankful for you guys to even I'm bring it to the spotlight. Thank, thank for you. I'm proud of you. Yes, um, for definitely. you know, you know, this is it's a, it's a big one. Like I said, you're sharing something very personal. Um, to and it took a while. It did. Yeah. I it, wasn't. I wasn't proud of it at right. first. Right. And it's not just about you. It. No. No. You're, you're it's really, not. Reaching out, like you said, reaching out. You're in the groups. You're, you know, you're, it's big. You it's know. bigger than me now. Yeah, yeah. like they say, you know, uh, stand for nothing, you fall for anything. You're standing up for something, yeah. you know, bigger than you. You could just be like, oh, I'm in pain, you could, but you're like, we, you know, you're sharing the pain and talking and and, and doing this, and this, this is big. Yeah, this is, this is big. So like I said, I'm proud of you. Um, definitely proud of you. You know, I'm gonna have my son. I'm gonna do my son. We're gonna make it happen. Um, Jack, do you think of your, your, any other question you want to have? No, I forgot the question. Right? <laughs> All right. It's long. It's long yeah, space. It's good. But it's everyone listening, everyone watching, uh, if you have any questions, comment comment them below. Um, you know, women, if you are dealing with it or have questions yourself, please please reach out. Um, anybody, men, women, everyone, comment, share your thoughts on it. if you know if you know a little bit more something we might have missed. Or if you have more questions about it, please, the conversation continues. If you know of, if you know of a uh, support group, mm -hmm. you know, share it. You know, yeah. More than sure. yeah. You know. We're not experts on it. Queen is not an expert on it. She's just someone who's dealing with it. And she's Apparently learning with a dance. Somebody <laughs> right. But she's learning. She's dealing with it. And she's learning about it. And growing more and more with it. Karina, uh, share your social media one more time for those it's, that may have a question that's pertaining to that. Yes, you know. pertaining to that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to spell it out. Um, yeah, it's K-A-R-I-N-A. A E and dot underscore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now pause it. Now pause the tape. Mm -hmm. Go back. <laughs> it ain't over and listen to it again know. because I'm pretty sure you missed it. Yeah, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. But yeah. I'll put I'll put the you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Jared, your social media as well for you know spread. The ladies, love. ladies, you can't hit him up. It's cool. Uh, go all in his DM. Single. Yeah, go go and all in. And, 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 uh, it, it was, was my shit private? Yeah, it is private. Yeah, fuck it. Oh. <laughs> just go on in. DM me though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, um, it's spread underscore one O V five. So basically, spread love. You know, it's the Brooklyn way. Mm -hmm. That's how it was spelled. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought you it was know. just spread love five. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. I, I just told the one in the five that was his birthday. That's what that thought It's a triple on time. I mean, don't ask me. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. Yeah. Spread love, one to the five, you know, it's what she does. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you know, it is, you know, um, Women's History Month. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've worn a shirt before, but definitely means more this month, you know. Women don't owe you shit. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't plan, like, again, this is just the magic of timing. Um, like I said, I had two Latina women last week talking about, you know, Jalen Shakira. I had, you know, an endometriosis. What, I don't know what to call it, survivor or warrior. Like, warrior. There we go. Warrior. An endometriosis warrior. Like right. So <laughs> here you go. But a big woman, you know, push right now. I did not plan this. Just the, the stars just aligned, you know. But I love women, so I'm here. To, All Mars 2020. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I support women in, in, in everything. Um, you know, we, we we big on that in 2020 on vision. Um, we all came from a woman. There you go. Cute yeah, to Tupac. But again, A2021 Vision, all social media platforms. Comment me if you have any questions. I can I can relate to her because I don't have the answers. But, you know. Not swear? No, nah, nah, <laughs> definitely not swear. Um, you know, once again, Karina, thank you. Thank you, guys. Jared, thank you. Oh, thank you. If you had some more questions, stuff to that that I might not have thought of. Um, and again, the conversation continues. Everybody else, ask questions about everything. Go all the way in. The conversation continues. And we're out of here. Cool.